Jigsaw is a strategy first developed by Elia Aronson in 1971 and further advanced into assessment practices by Robert Slavin in 1986. It began as a method to assist students who had recently been desegregated and were learning to overcome hostilities and work together. In addition to the benefits of the students getting along, Slavin realized that students' learning also greatly improved. Just as a jigsaw puzzle is a collection of various pieces coming together to make a complete picture, the jigsaw method of teaching tasks each student with becoming an expert with part of the learning puzzle. After a student studies that piece and meets with an expert group of peers, he or she brings it back to a home group to share, thus completing the puzzle. Specifically, this active learning experience allows individuals and small groups of students to become responsible for a subcategory of a larger topic and then to teach it to the rest of their group. According to the meta-analysis of John Hattie and Visible Learning, Jigsaw has an effect size of 1.2, the highest of any teaching strategy, revealing that this active learning experience has the potential to considerably accelerate student achievement. Jigsaw is most effective when used frequently, which will help students internalize the process and recognize its benefits for their own learning. The first time students engage in this strategy, they may feel discombobulated by the cooperative groupings, steps, and directions. So it is essential that the teacher not only provide the directions up front, but that they direct the students with each step of the process, stopping and starting as the experience unfolds and pausing for questions and clarification. Here are some tips to use before starting a jigsaw with students. Give students experience with small group learning skills before participating in the jigsaw strategy. Use a graphic organizer to collect and then share information. Give students space to jot down their individual ideas, then the ideas gleaned from the expert group, as well as a plan for sharing with their home group. Be sure to circulate the room to ensure that groups are on task and managing their work well. Ask groups to stop and think about how they are checking for everyone's understanding and ensuring that everyone's voice is heard. Monitor the comprehension of the group members by asking questions and rephrasing information until it is clear that all group members understand the key points. Let's take a look at how Jigsaw works in the classroom. First, divide students into a three to five person group. Next, divide a lesson, a reading selection, or another source of material into three to five segments. For example, if you want students to learn about Eleanor Roosevelt, you might divide a short biography of her into standalone segments on one, her childhood, two, her family life with Franklin and their children, three, her life after Franklin contracted polio, four, her work in the White House as First Lady, and five, her life and work after Franklin's death. Assign each student to learn one segment. Make sure students have direct access to their own piece, ensuring all students know that they are responsible for learning that portion. If each student's part is essential, then each student is essential, and that is precisely what makes this strategy so effective. Give students time to review, read, and annotate their segment at least twice and become familiar with it, but assure them that there is no need to memorize it. It is important that the reading material assigned is at an appropriate instructional level. Now, have students form temporary expert groups by having one student from each jigsaw group join other students assigned to the same segment. Give students in these expert groups time to discuss the main points of their segment by providing key questions to help them gather information in their particular area. They also need time to rehearse the 
presentations they will make to their jigsaw group. Remind students that these presentations are informal, but need to be complete and accurate as they are teaching their peers their segment. Finally, bring the students back into their home group. At this point in the process, discuss the procedures and guidelines as each expert reports the information they learned and gathered. The teacher will also need to have prepared a way to summarize each home group's ideas. Each student will present his or her segment to their group. Remind students that they are responsible to learn all content, each piece of the puzzle, from one another. Encourage others in the group to ask questions for clarification by providing those sentence stems. The teachers should float from group to group, observing their presentations and discussions. This is a perfect time for formative assessment. Once each expert has shared with their home group and the jigsaw puzzle is complete, have students individually write a summary of their learning using a summarization strategy, such as a capsule or a $1.50 summary. Teachers can also have a brief whole class discussion about the source of the jigsaw to answer any questions or clarify any misconceptions. Jigsaw provides opportunities for differentiated instruction for second language learners, students of varying reading skills, students with learning disabilities, and younger learners. Jigsaw in the Classroom has a four-decade track record of success.